Hello, this is Kathleen McKee of Olene.com, Machine Embroidery Art. Lesson 39, Freehand Embossing and Engraving. Remember how I showed you to emboss in Lesson 25? Well, forget about it. That is, unless you are using version 8 of PE Design or an earlier version. My good friend and embroidery buddy, Edwina Bankston, discovered this new feature on PE Design Next that I hate to say I was unaware of. Uh, here's that same old elephant that needs some wrinkles on his knees, and I'm going to show you the new way uh, that Edwina showed me how to do it, and it's way superior. Okay, first of all, I'll get up a little close. And under the Home tab, we're going to go to our Line Region tool. I have also placed mine on the Quick Access Toolbar, so I don't have to go to different tabs, but I'm going to do it so uh, we can pick the Curved Open Line tool. And I'm going to put the first wrinkle in the knee. Double click when I'm finished. And I'll go ahead and put one over here while I've got that tool out. So I'll go uh, left click, left, 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 left. And double click. Okay, so now what we're going to do, let me zoom out. I'm going to select uh, that line we just drew and then with my finger on the control key I'm also going to select the fill stitch where I want the embossing to show up. So we have them both selected. Now we're going to go to our edit tab and right next to the stamp there's this new uh, icon that was not in version 8 uh, and I didn't really understand when I first got the software but now I do and now you click on this and we're going to emboss and engrave uh, line region outlines from a line and I'm going to click on that and look what happens the uh, line uh, disappears and now we have that embossed area there okay I'm going to do the same thing over here and it doesn't matter if it's uh, outside of the uh, fill area as long as you select it and then with your finger on the control key, also select the fill that you want to put the embossing on. Go up to our Edit tab from Outline, click on that, click on Line, and now we have the wrinkles in our elephant's knee. And what's so cool about this, you can still edit it, although you can't edit it by trying to click on the line area, you can still edit the size and the rotation of that from the stamp. When you click on that, you have your edit stamp. This is the one with the little arrow. That's your edit stamp. And it'll give you some options. You know, I'm not really interested. I don't need that. I just want to select this. Okay, then I, it first tells me the fill area. Then I click it the second time, and that will pick out my embossed area. Now if I want to make that a little more narrow, or I want to rotate it a little bit, I can. Just move it a bit. Same with this one. Get that embossed area. I want to make that a little more narrow. And so now we have the uh, wrinkles in our elephant's knees. And that's one cool thing that you can do just freehand uh, with the new PE Design Next. But here's something even cooler that you can do with it. And this is one of the reasons why they really have done a good job with this, this upgrade of Next. Uh, I'm going to do a manual punch. Top, bottom, top, bottom, top. Okay. And then I'm also, while I'm, I'm on the home, I'm going to do a closed... I just want to show you some differences. Okay, double click. Oh, we don't have a fill there, so let me select it, and I'm going to click on the fill, because we need a fill. Okay, and I'm going to change the color on this so 
it shows up better on the screen. Pink usually does a good job of showing up. Now, not only can you use your line tool as we were talking about, uh, you can do it uh, not just on a, on a fill stitch, but you can do it on a manual punch. Double click. And we can select that line and hold our finger on the control key. And now we'll go to the edit tab. And now we have a line of stitches going through the satin stitch. Now normally we would never make a satin stitch this long because as you know, satin stitch tends to uh, uh, drop a stitch wherever it wants to uh, after about eight to 10 millimeters. But look at this here. What you can also do is uh, you can draw an object And, oops, select that. We need to put a fill stitch on it. And then put your finger on the control key and select the background fill. And this time when you go to the edit tab, you have different more options. Besides line, you have engrave or emboss. Now if we just do the line, this is what happens. You just have the line outside and undo that. If we, and I'm going to hold my finger on the control key, select the background fill. If we engrave it, it's going to look like it's engraved or, or, or uh, you know, embedded in the uh, fill stitch. Let's undo that. But, uh, and the emboss is really cool too. Uh, when we select it, and hold the finger on the control key, select the background fill, and emboss turns it into like a satin stitch where it tends to look like it's popping out. And this will work on uh, a fill stitch or a satin stitch. Uh, but one of the coolest things you could do with it is if you use a font or a text, we can type out uh, e, we're going to engrave, so enter. All right, let's make this real big so we can see it. Now, if we try to engrave this by holding the con ho control key and selecting the background. When you go to the edit key, this is grayed out. In other words, it's saying you have no options to uh, make that emboss or engrave or put a line in there. So this is what I love about this PE Design Next, is in the attribute section, you have the ability to convert your stitches to blocks, to stitches, or to an outline. In this case, we want an outline because uh, we want to be able to have the outline in, uh, engrave or emboss our background fill. Now you notice it's got the little uh, spotted lines around it, so we, that means it's grouped, so we need to ungroup it. Now the group an ungroup key is usually under the edit, but I group and ungroup things so often that I always keep it on my quick access toolbar as explained uh, in lesson one. And we're going to ungroup those letters. So uh, now if I hold my hand on the control key now that it's been converted to a line, it still will not give us the option to engrave it. You have to do each letter one by one. So let's select the E and finger on control button. Let's also select the background and now you see it's highlighted again so we have a choice. This time it says we can engrave or emboss. Uh, it's not going to, even though it's a line, it's been converted to a line, it only gives us the ability to engrave or emboss. So we can engrave this letter and you see it kind of put a stamp in there. So we have to do each one separately. This letter here, I'm going to put my finger on the control, choose the background. 
uh, and this time we're going to emboss it. Uh, this letter here, I'm going to move it so you can see what it looks like here. And we're going to hold the, our finger on the control key, select the background, and we're going to engrave. You see how it put the stitches down because these are all satin stitches. Uh, now if you, I'm going to move this over here. Control select the background and then you can see the difference between the emboss and the engrave. So I hope you can uh, see the endless possibilities you have playing around with this new from outline uh, under your edit tab and how you can get uh, more three-dimensional effects with your embroidery stitches. Happy hooping!